Hello everyone, this is Pastor Jared at Calvary Chapel of Johnson County, and this is episode four of our podcast, 1500 Words. Uh, Before we started today, I did just want to let you guys know that our church does have an app now on the App Store, and it will have the latest teachings and podcasts on it. Or if you'd like to learn a little bit more about our church, you can actually get information about us there as well. You can get driving directions and find out where we are at. Uh, If you want to download that, you can search for us on the App Store of your choice. Just look up Calvary Chapel, Johnson County. As we begin this week, I'd like to share from John chapter 7, verses 37 to 39. It says the following, On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive, For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Today I just want to say, if someone out there is thirsty, if you're really and truly thirsty in your life, there's an emptiness that you want filled, and you cry out to the Lord Jesus, He will certainly fill you, and He will work in you, and He will change you and give you a new heart. And I can say confidently today, that that was certainly the case in my life. Remember, I was an empty senior in high school, and I was going nowhere fast. And really, if I had only turned to Jesus, he would have done some magnificent things in my life. And I think if you told me in high school that I was one day going to be a pastor, or that one day I would be on the missions field, I would have, I would have laughed at you. There was no way that I would have ever done anything like that in my life. But I am so thankful that God is persistent in his love for us, that he is patient, that he is kind, and that even though I personally rejected him, that he pursued me. And if you'll remember last week at the end of the episode, I was saying that even though my life was a disaster, and it certainly was, that God was working behind the scenes to draw me to himself. And today I really wanted to talk about that process a little bit and and how it looked like in my life. And I can remember each of the times I was arrested in high school that my pastor, Alan Sparks, would come to the house or he would meet with me somewhere and he would share with me about Jesus. And he would encourage me to get right with the Lord. And I know my parents shared with me about Jesus as well, that, that there was a need that I had to follow him. And in fact, it seemed that everywhere I went... I was faced with Jesus, with Jesus, and with more Jesus. There was so much Jesus in my life that I began to hate the idea that God wanted me to follow him. I rejected God in my life, and I can remember being at church services because, of course, that's where my parents were each Sunday, and and as I attended, I paid absolutely no attention to anything that was being said. And for all of the rejecting of God that I did, He just kept reaching out to me. I was court-ordered to go to a drug and alcohol counselor, and I ended up seeing a lady that would tell me about the Lord from time to time. And somehow during that time in my life, I had gotten a copy of the book that is called Left Behind. And if you don't know, that's a, a fictional story that is based on the actual event that will occur that is called the rapture of the church. And in the story, people suddenly disappeared from the world. Uh, Some who were not properly walking with the Lord stayed behind, and those, obviously, that didn't know Jesus were left behind. And I remember telling the counselor about reading that book, and she would show me in the scriptures that the rapture was a real thing and that the book of Revelation was certainly going to pass one day. And, And I really found that these things were interesting, things I had not thought about before, or really even heard in my life, and perhaps people told me about them, but I just never uh, really processed that this was something that would actually happen. And that certainly got me to thinking. Uh, God was using that book in my life, and he was causing me to begin to think uh, that maybe there was something more to life than what I was experiencing. And, And another thing that the Lord used was a movie that is called The Matrix, and and I would not endorse this movie now. I wouldn't promote watching it. 
Uh, but when I saw it, it really challenged my mind and the way that I thought about things. And the premise of that movie is that nothing that we see is really reality, that there's something much more out there that not everybody is experiencing. And I can remember beginning to think about that idea. And, and I can remember I would go outside and I would sit on my deck at home or I would sit at my workplace, which at the time was Burger King, and I would sit outside at the picnic tables in front of the building. And, and I remember that I would look out at the world, and actually there was a, a Holiday Inn across the street there. And I just remember looking out and thinking, there's got to be some truth out there that I don't understand. And, and thinking that if I could just grab hold of that truth, that it would change my life. And, and I always had this picture in my mind. It was always like, a curtain that was in front of my eyes. And I felt like, man, if I could just pull that curtain back, I know I would find truth, and I know I would find what I was looking for. And, and so I just had that picture in my mind all the time, and I was always thinking that there had to be more to life than what I was experiencing. What it was, I wasn't sure, but one thing I knew was that it certainly was not Jesus. In my mind, to live for Jesus meant I would be giving up my freedom, that he would be the leader of my life, and that absolutely did not line up with my life goals in any way, shape, or form. So you can imagine all these things were happening in my life, and I'm beginning to look for truth, and people are telling me about Jesus, and I'm certainly not interested in that. In fact, as I rejected Jesus, my hostility towards God during that time of my life was actually growing. And I remember one time uh, very vividly sitting down and writing a letter to God, and I cursed God. I demanded that he get out of my life. I told him I'm living for what I want to live for, and there was no way I would ever live for him. And, and I actually cursed him and told him to get out of my life. And that was such a, a sad time now that I look at it. I'm like, oh, what, what was I doing? What was I thinking? And I think if you looked at my life at that time, you could see that there was definitely a war that was happening in my heart, that the Lord Jesus was calling me to himself, and I was rejecting it. And I remember that my mind was a mess. I was constantly justifying why I could keep living and doing the things I was doing. I was arguing all the time with my parents at this time in my life. My relationship with my little brother was dissolving. And really, I was leaving an example to him that was deplorable. But I was determined that I would continue on my path. And then I was arrested for the final time in high school. It happened on school property. The police were called because of some things that had happened. I won't go into the details, but I was making a fool of myself. And I actually ended up confessing to have marijuana in my car. They demanded to, to search my car, and I said, well, you don't need to search it. There's stuff in there anyways. And so they called the police. The police came and put handcuffs on me. They took me to my locker to get my things out, and they walked me out to my car. And, and they got the things out of my car that I shouldn't have had. And I remember that was a very humiliating point in my life. I can remember as I walked by with the police that people were watching me as I went to my locker. And, and I remember that was one of the few times that I was feeling like I was broken. I remember crying as I went through the school. Uh, I was upset. Uh, but the Bible says that godly sorrow leads to repentance, leads to real repentance. And, and I certainly didn't have godly sorrow in my life. I was just sad that I'd gotten caught once again. Um, after that happened, I assumed that things would stay the same in my life. And for a week or so, it did. Uh, but I came home, and, and the details are a little fuzzy in my mind, but I went to a probation appointment and found myself being handcuffed and taken to jail. Uh, it wasn't juvenile jail this time. It was adult jail, and that was certainly a scary time in my life. I'm so very thankful I wasn't there for very long. I was in for 18 days, uh, but, man, that is a time in my life. I just, uh, I just It was a fearful time. I, I was... A scared little boy that was sitting in jail at 18 years old. And I remember talking to my parents on the phone, and I talked about how anxious I was to get out of jail and come home. And I remember my mom saying to me, Jared, you won't be coming home. You have a little brother here at the house, and you're setting a terrible example for him. 
and you're going to need to figure out somewhere else to go. And, oh, man, that was shocking to me that I wasn't allowed to come home. Eventually, we came to the agreement that I would come home if I agreed to go to drug and alcohol rehab. And reluctantly, I did so, uh, but mostly so that I could be released, so I could go back home. And they did give me the option to choose which place I would go to. And, of course, I chose the, the drug and alcohol program that would be the easiest for me to just continue on my course. There was still no desire in my life to change. I distinctly remember I chose the place uh, that I ended up, that I didn't end up going to, but that I was scheduled to go to because you could still smoke when you went there and attended. Um, so my idea was that I was going to go to the program, do the time, and uh, just continue on about my way with no real desire to change. Now, on the other side of the coin, uh, there were people in my life that were really rooting for me, people that were praying for me daily, people that wanted to see change in my life, people that wanted to see the Lord work in my life. And they began to speak to me about a place called Teen Challenge. And Teen Challenge was an eight-month program where you would go and you would live and you would be taught about the Lord Jesus Christ and you would study the scriptures. And um, first of all, I didn't want to be at a program for eight months when I could go to a program for three months. I'll take the three-month route, thank you. Uh, that sounded boring to me. I had no interest in spiritual things. I was not interested. And uh, the Lord had a different plan because that was precisely the place that I did end up going to. Um, and that was a tough time in my life, you know, to go to Teen Challenge and uh, go through that process and the Lord getting a hold of me and his desire to change me. And, and really my uh, flesh was strong. There were things in my life I didn't want to give up. There were things in my life I, I didn't think I needed to give up or even dreamed of giving up. Uh, but God was going to do a work in my life at Teen Challenge. And so we'll talk about that next week uh, in our next episode, I guess I should say, how I finally ended up at Teen Challenge. Uh, certainly a spiritual warfare was happening in my life. There was a battle going on, uh, the Lord calling me to himself and my flesh just drawing me into the world and, and wanting to destroy me. So today as we close, if you're listening, I just want to go back to that beginning portion that if you are thirsty, if you want to be filled in your life, if you want to find purpose, if you know that there's more to life than that which you're experiencing right now, I want to tell you that Jesus is the answer. And I want to encourage you to cry out to him. And if you call to him, he will answer and he will work in your life. God is the great rescuer of humankind. He's the one that reaches his hands down into our lives. And as Psalm chapter 40 says, he sets our feet on solid rock. He pulls us out of the miry clay and sets us on the solid rock. And that rock is Jesus Christ. And so I just uh, pray if there's anyone out there uh, that you're just having a tough time and you have that emptiness in your life, that you would cry out to the Lord and he would save you. So may the Lord bless you today. May he continue to work in your life. And may he continue to mature us into that which he desires. May God bless you today.